Hi everyone, let's start again. I did this once already and made a hash of it, so um, <laughs> how are you all going? I'm reading uh, a little bit uh, preface to the reader, reader bleh, of, um, I'll start again again. I'm reading the preface to the reader for the MEV Bible and um, I've um, done part two because my battery ran out halfway through doing this. So um, I'm going to read that little first part again. It only takes a minute because my battery ran out after I'd read just a couple of paragraphs. So let's try again, eh? God bless. So it's the MEV Bible. And um, preface to the reader, and I've got to read to there, which is where I started the second one, was there, part two. In January 1604, the King James, King James I convened the Hampton Court Conference at the Hampton Court Palace. Meeting with King, King James I were two parties representing the Church of England. One party comprised the Archbishop of Canterbury, John Whitgiff and eight bishops who represented the episcopacy supported by eight deans and one archdeacon. The second party comprised several Anglicans who were moderate Puritans led by John Reynolds who was the president of Corpus Christi College, Oxford. The conference comprised three meetings over a period of three days. The conference was called in response that funny noise is my computer it's processing part two uh, so just forgive that please the conference was called in response to a series of requests for reform set down in the military millenari millenary petition by the puritans a document that contained the signatures of 1000 puritan ministers the petition detailed complaints about the terms absolution and confirmation water baptism administered by, administered by women rather than by ministers, excommunication for trifles and twelve, twelve penny matters, and ecclesiastical discipline administered by governmental authority and various other issues. King James I persuaded the bishops that only ministers should administer baptisms. He also abolished excommunication for trifles and twelve penny matters though he maintained that bishop, bishops should not be the sole administer, ministers of ecclesiastical discipline and that the trial policies of the commission and his court should, should be reviewed by the Lord Chancellor of Lord Chief Justice. The king alleviated many of the Puritans' concerns and brought much peace between the two parties. Trouble mounted for the Puritans when Archbishop John Whitgift decided died, sorry, soon after the conference, didn't put my glasses on, beg your pardon, Richard Bancroft was appointed to the See of Canterbury and due to the King's concerns, the Puritan ministers were expected to adhere to each of the 39 articles that upheld the hierarchical nature of the Church of England, which the Puritans sought to abolish. But the major outcome of the conference was that King James first commissioned a new translation of the Holy Bible into the English vernacular, which became the predecessor to the modern English version. The translation was to be pleasing both to the episcopacy and the modern Puritans who emphasised that man should be able to study the Holy Bible not only with the help of the ministers but also privately. The translation became known as the Authorised Version because only this translation would be authorised to be read in the Church of England once it replaced portions of the Great Bible inserted in the 1662 edition of the Book of Common Prayer. In some, some parts of the world it is known as the King James Version. The transaction enabled King James I to broaden his support in the Church and among the populace, it demonstrated his moderate and inclusive approach to concerns in the church. So that's the end of that's the end of part one. And uh, please listen to part two because that's the bulk of the readings. Thanks. Thanks for listening. God bless you all.